Alright guys, so so far we have learned different methods on how to group up the values of dimensions into groups, but now we will learn how to group up the values of measures into groups. And for that we're gonna learn the pins in Tableau. And as usual, let's first understand the concept behind the pins, and then we're gonna learn how to build it in Tableau. So let's go. Alright guys, so before as we learned dimensions and measures, we learned the secret formula of building new views, and that is measure by dimension, like sales by category. But sometimes we have to build view from two measures, so it's gonna be measure by measure, like profit by sales, quantity by profit, and so on. One way to do that is by converting one of those measures to bins. So we will have profit by sales bins and quantity by profit bins. So what is bins? Pens divide the data into groups of equally sized containers, resulting in systematic distribution of the data. And we can use those pens to create charts called histograms. So histogram gonna classify your data into different pins and then counts how many data points do we have inside each of these pins. And in histograms, we usually use the bar chart to visual the data. Alright, so now let's have an easy example in order to understand the pins and histograms. Alright, so now let's have the following data. We have 10 customers and with their scores, the scores are like points that the customers collect. And now we want to count how many customers fall within a range of scores. For example, how many customers do we have in the range between 0 and 30? 30 and 60 and so on. So first we have to create pins. In order to create pins, we need few informations. Like what is the highest value in the scores? So it's gonna be the first customer, the 63. And what is the lowest value in the scores? It's gonna be the zero. The next value that we have to define is the size of the pin. So for example, here we're gonna take the size of 30. And now we have all the information that we need in order to create the pins. Don't forget they are equally sized. So what that means? So the first pins that we have is between 0 and 30. It starts with the lowest value, the 0, and the size should be 30. That's why we have the range between 0 and 30. So this is our first pin. The next one gonna be between the 30 and the 60. Again, as you can see, the size is 30. And now the last pin gonna be between 60 and 90. And with that, we're gonna stop because we with the last pin we can cover the highest value. So with that we have created from the measure score and equally sized pins. And now after we created our pins, we are gonna go and count how many customers, how many data points do we have inside each pin. Alright, so now let's start counting the customers for each pin. Our first pin starts from 0 to 30. So let's see how many customers do we have inside this range. So the first customer is out, we will not count it. The second one is inside the range, so we have one customer, two customers, three customers. This customer is out of the range, the same over here. So here we have the first customer, this customer is out, we have the customer number five, and that's it. So we have five customers between the 0 and 30. Alright, so now let's move to the the next pin, how many customers do we have that their score is between 30 and 60? Alright, so now let's start counting and scan our table. I think all those values are out. We have this customer that is inside this range. Then we have the 45 and as well 55. So we have four customers, their score between 30 and 60. So this is our second pin. Let's move now to the last pin. So we have the range between 60 and 90. And now let's count how many customers do we have inside this range. So we have 10 customers, we have already 9 so I think we have only one and that is the customer number one and all other values are not in this range so we have one customer and that's it with that we have created a histogram for the scores we just have to create the pins and count how many data points are inside each of those pins and we call those blue bars as pins and each pin has a size and now let's say that we want to define another value for the size of the bin and we take the value 10 so what can happen we can have more pins so the first one can be between 0 and 10, the next is 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and so on. So it makes sense, if you define smaller size for the pins, you will get more chunks from the data. So instead of having 3 pins, now we have 7 pins. And as you know, after creating the pins, we're gonna count how many customers do we have inside each of those pins. So if you go and start counting, you're gonna have the following histogram. 
So as you can see, what is defining the score is the lowest and the highest values inside our data and as well the size of the pins. So as you can see, using the pins, we created different groups from a measure. And now you might ask me, why do we need histograms? Why they are important? Well, if you compare the table on the left side with the visual on the right side, in the histogram, you can quickly identify trends and patterns in the distribution of the customers. Like you can see quickly that most of our customers have the score between 0 and 30. So this type of chart gonna help you quickly understand whether everything is okay or you have to improve in certain areas. So you can define new strategies and make better decisions using the data. Alright, so now let's see how we can create pins and histogram in Tableau. And we can do that only on the worksheet page. We cannot do it at the data source page. And there is two ways in order to do that. Either we create pins in the data pane or we can create pins in the visualization. So let's start with the first one. So now we're going to create a histogram for the customer scores. And we're going to stay with the big data source on the left side. We're going to go to the data pane and we need the score. So right click on it and then we go to create and here we have the option of pins. So let's go and click that. So now we have here a new window to create the pins. The first one we have the field name. We're going to leave it as it is. The second option here we have the size of pins. And here as a default Tableau going to follow specific mathematical equation in order to find the suitable size of pins. But if you don't want this value you can go and change it. So for example let's go with the value of 20. And after that, we found information about the range of values. So what is the minimum value and the maximum value that we found inside the field score and the differences between them. So for now, that's all. We're going to have the size of bands of 20 and let's hit OK. And now if you check the data pane on the left side, you can find a new field called score bin. It is a dimension because it has a finite number of values and the score can stay, of course, as a measure. So let's check the values inside our new field. So let's drop it here on the rows. And now, as you can see, we have the pins and the size of each pin is 20. OK, so now so far we have the pins from the score. The next step in order to make a histogram is to get the count of the customers. So now let's use this measure, the customer count, drag and drop it here on the view and then I have to switch between them so it looks like a histogram. So with that, we have our histogram, but we are not there yet. To make it look like a real histogram, we have to have the pins as continuous. So if you check the score bin on the left side, you can see it is a discrete, it is a blue color. And now we're going to go and convert it to continuous. So right click on it and convert to continuous. Let's click on that. And it's still on the view as a discrete. So we have to convert it as well here in the view as a continuous. So with that, we have created a histogram in Tableau. I'm going to add the final touch where I'm going to add the values for each pin. So we go to the labels, show mark label. And now I'm going to change as well the coloring in our histogram. So I'm going to take the score pin and put it in the colors. Let's do that. We are still not there. I would like to have the pin with the highest number of customers to be darker. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the customers, edit color, and then we're going to go over here and reverse it. Click OK. Now I'm happy. This is how I usually present the histograms in the project. And now once we have the histogram, we have to discuss it in order to understand the data. So usually we search for peaks, for valleys, or any outliers that stands out. And for histograms, there are different shapes with different interpretations. And the shape of our histogram that we have called skewed to the right. Skew it to the right means that the histogram on the left side has the highest peak and then the frequency of the data going to be descending as you go to the right and on the right side you're going to have the lowest frequency of the data points which is not really good in this example that means we have a lot of new customers that didn't collect yet any points so the histograms are really powerful to see the distribution of your customers in one click and to quickly understand whether there are issues in your business or if you find any new trends so now for this example, we have decided that the size of the bin is 20. Let's say that you want to change the distribution and you want to change the size as well. So in order to do that, let's go to our field, right click on it, and then we go to the edit. So let's select that. And here we can go over here and change it to 10. Let's click OK. And now, as you can see, we have more pins and more details about our data. So now you might ask me, I want it to be more dynamic and I want to give the users the option of defining how many pins do we have. And for this, we're going to use another feature called parameters, which is going to be in the next tutorial. All right. So now so far we have learned how to create pins from the data pane. There is another way to create pins and histogram in Tableau, which is way easier than what I showed you. We can do that directly from the visualization. Let me show you what I mean. So let's create a new worksheet. 
And let's say that I want to create a histogram from the sales. So in order to do that, we're going to go and take the sales and put it on the rows. And then we're going to go over here on the show me. And we have predefined visualization from Tableau called histogram. So the requirement for this visualization is only one measure. So once we click on that, you will see that Tableau did everything. If you check the data pane on the left side, we have already a pen or a dimension called sales pen with the role of continuous. And of course, Tableau is going to start just the size of the bins you can go and change that of course but as you can see it's really easy we just took one measure in the view and click in the histogram the rest is going to be done from tableau and this is exactly the power of tableau in the visualization Alright guys, so now let's have a summary. Pins gonna divide your data into equally sized containers, which gonna result in systematic distribution of the data. And pins are the method of creating groups from measures. So that means we can create pins only from the measures, we cannot create it from dimensions. Because dimensions are already pins. And pins themselves are dimensions, and it's better to convert it to continuous dimension to be used in histograms. And one limitation in Tableau that you cannot create pins from calculated fields and the main purpose of having pins and histogram is to quickly identify patterns and trends in the distribution of your data all right guys so that's all for the pins and histograms and with that we have learned everything about how to organize and customize our data in tableau and we are done with this chapter next we will learn in tableau how to filter your data using different techniques at different layers and if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really gonna help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.